Hey there guys and girls, welcome back to a new Photoshop tutorial with PSD Box. My name is Andre and in this quick tutorial I want to show you how to create a faded effect um, also known as the ViscoCam effect and um, this is the effect that we're gonna create so before and after and exactly the same adjustments work for other photos but not for all of them I just have this uh, other image to show you how that looks. We're just gonna use a few adjustment layers as you can see here. I hope you will like the tutorial and let's get started. Great, and the first thing I want to do is drag, drag this group under my image here. This is the image that we're going to start with. This is going to be a quite simple tutorial, but what I want you to understand is how to get to uh, the effect that we're going to get to, but not focus as much on the settings that I'm using on the adjustments because each image is different and you can do things in Photoshop in a lot of ways. Uh, so there are a lot of techniques to get the same results. And I just want you to get the feeling of this uh, of this effect. As you can see, we have a lot of light on the shadows, a bit desaturated. Well, we desaturated the colors a bit, and we have a tint of brown or yellow. This uh, is up to you, the tone that you give to your image. But I want you to get the feeling and more or less understand how you can get to this effect. Okay, I'm going to show you the way I do things. But uh, maybe if you ask me two months from here, uh, show me how to create this ViscoCam effect, I will most likely use different adjustments, different settings and different everything because I'm not the kind of person that write down uh, all the techniques that I use and then use them over and over again. I just do things uh, along the way and I get uh, different results every time. So this is the way I did this particular effect. I will start with an exposure adjustment. So I'll go down here and I'll create an exposure adjustment layer and I just touched the offset and I'll give you the exact value that I have here it's 0 0.0496 okay you can use different um, um, settings here for different photos as I said each photo is different we had a lot of darks here a lot of shadows and I used this setting and you can see we are starting to get this effect already this is the most um, recognizable feature of this effect uh, which is this light on the shadows. Okay, so that's the only thing that I did with the adjustment with this adjustment layer. The next adjustment that I used is a hue saturation. And here, this is uh, uh, the settings that you will use here also depend on your image. Here we have little color. We have this greens here. We have um, some cyan, grays. The skin is not really colored so uh, we don't have too much saturation on the skin so we're just going to work with the reds and the greens reds yellows and greens are the most common colors on all images so we're just going to start with the reds which will affect mainly the skin lips and maybe a bit the sand here and this is these are the settings that i have so i have a five for the hue i changed a bit the way the reds look 12 for the saturation, I saturated them a bit, and plus 7, and I will deactivate this for a second so you can see the change. Maybe you will see it here on the sand, maybe here on the lips a bit, see that, and on the hair. We made this slightly uh, different, not much. Then on the greens, we have the following um, settings, minus 34 for the hue, so I made them more yellow, 36, I saturated them. And for the lightness, 31. I made them more, more illuminated. See that? You can see the change a lot better here on the greens. Great. Now, let's move on. I will not touch anything else here. You can do it, though, if you want. But for this image, I think uh, it was okay. Now, the next adjustment is a color fill. Oops, not a gradient. A color fill, solid color. And here, um, I'll give you the value that I have. It's 1, B, 2, 3, 4, 6. So this slightly unsaturated blue, very dark. Click OK. And I chose the exclusion blend mode. And this is the effect that we get here. We get a sort of a split tone effect, which we will uh, intensify using the curves later. But uh, this is the effect that you, uh, you get with this. Uh, and the opacity that I used is just 30%. I don't want such a strong effect. With this, what we get is 
we lose more contrast it evens out the image even more uh, if it's not what you like you can get rid of this if you cannot um, you don't have to use it necessarily uh, one other thing that you can do with this I'll just duplicate this and hide the bottom one for a second and leave the opacity to 100% what also you can do with this to get different uh, uh, effects that are quite popular on this viscocam uh, effects is you can change the blend mode. Let's change this first to to lighten, and then use different tones that you want to give to your image. But if you use really dark tones, the effect will not be visible. So you have to go up until you start to see how the shadows are illuminated. And from here you can saturate or desaturate. So if you use a really desaturated um, color the light will be white or gray okay so uh, once you have the saturation that you want go up or down until you get the amount of light that you want so you don't even necessarily you don't even have to use the opacity you just control the opacity using the darkness or brightness of this okay you can use a yellow or this brown color if you want on your shadow this will mainly affect the shadow so the more you go um, towards the 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 bright areas you'll see you'll, you'll start to include more and more tones and uh, it's just a matter of finding the right amount okay something like that and you will see the effect before and after but I like the exclusion so I will leave this and stick with this next as I said we will add a curves adjustment and here we will make a split tone effect so we'll go down to the blue and here I have two points, I'll give you the values that I have for both of them. So on the bottom one, here, this one over here, we have an input of 45 and an output of 50. This is just the, uh, the coordinates for that point. And for the top one, this one over here on the right, we have an output of 210 and an input of 210 and output to 04. If you drag this point, these are the highlights, as you can see, we don't have that many highlights. We have mainly dark mid-tones and we have this gap here. And that's because of this exposure, we pretty much eliminated all pure blacks. That's why we have no shadows almost. This is just really dark mid-tones. And here we have the highlights, you can see we have a few ones, we have this gap here. And um, if you want to make these highlights, more yellow you can drag this even lower and you will start to see if I make really big changes you can start to see how this part over here becomes yellow that's too much so let's leave it around here as I said the settings will vary depending on your image if you have an image that has no highlights you'll have to drag this even lower okay this works for my image so I'll leave it like that and well also let's change the RGB and I have this point right here with an input of 190 and output 198 just to enhance slightly the highlights and I have another bottom point here with output not output 99 and input 99 and output 102 just to keep the midtones how they were you can see how this looks without the curves and with the curves we just pumped a bit the yellows on the highlights and last but not least a gradient map I'm using Photoshop CS6 and there's uh, some gradients called photographic toning if you use um, older versions of Photoshop like CS2 or CS3 I, I don't think this ones come with your Photoshop version but uh, I'll include this um, gradients on the download folder so you can load them in Photoshop and use them and I use this um, which one was I think it was this one sepia gold or something like that gold sepia this one click OK and the blend mode that I use for this is soft light this increases increases the contrast a lot more and we lose that feeling so you have to drop the opacity I dropped it to 30 percent and you can see we get this golden look on your image and that's how I created this effect let me group everything here so you can see the effect before and after if you want to give your image a different tone you can put on top of everything a, another solid color and let's use this color and change the blend mode to hue 
okay and now drop drop the opacity let's say to 20 percent maybe and you can see now you can change the tone of your image and uh, look uh, have a colder tone a more brown tone more golden uh, or green tone also try you can try color but you have to drop drop the opacity even more let's say five percent and again here you can change the aspect of your image i'll leave it with this golden touch because i like it and the last step is to create a stamp and merge all the layers because i want to sharpen this so i'm going to i'm going to filter sharpen smart sharpen and a radius of 0.4 for this canvas size i think it's okay the hair looks nice an amount of about 100 percent is okay and click okay and this will sharpen my image and make it look more crisp and more clear and makes it look better so that's the effect uh, again before and after it's an easy effect to achieve uh, will work on many photos but as i said not on all of them you can use the same adjustments and make your own tweaks to it and adjust it uh, adapt it to your photo so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you like the final result i'm andre from psd box and we'll see you on the next tutorial